Baruch Atah Adonai Elachenu Shalom, y'all. Oh, yes. Uh, I welcome you to uh, your pastor, Danny's Downtown Daily Devotional. Uh, my name is Moses. Uh, I introduced myself yesterday. Um, your awesome, intelligent, creative, fantastic pastoral pastor uh, invited me to lead your devotions this week. So I am happy to do so. This is my second. So again, my name is Moses. It's so great to be with you on this Tuesday. Shalom, y'all. See, I'm learning. I don't spend a whole lot of time in the South, um, but I love your language here and uh, great, wonderful folks. I love my time in Columbus so far. So um, I want to talk to you today about something this reminded me of. But first, your pastor tells me I have to tell a joke, so he gave me uh, a horrible joke to tell you, so here it goes. I was flying in uh, an airport one time, waiting to get on my plane, and who do I see right there waiting? Former President George W. Well, he looks at me, and well, I look like I do, and he guessed I was Moses, but he came up and he said, hey, uh, aren't you Moses? And uh, I just refused to acknowledge. I just looked the other way. Then he stepped right in front of me in my field of vision and said, Hey, uh, you really look like Moses. Uh, are you Moses? And um, again, I looked the other way. Didn't look at him. Finally, he tugged on my shirt and said, Hey, I know you're Moses. You're Moses, aren't you? And finally, I gave up and said, Yes, I am. And he said, Well, well, why didn't you tell me in the first place? As I said, the last time I spoke to a bush, I wind up spending 40 years in the wilderness. <laughs> yeah, you can blame your pastor for that. So anyway, I was walking around downtown, Zipporah and I, that's my wife. Uh, we went for a coffee at the Iron Bank and we're just walking around and what do I see but right here? You know what this reminded me of, friends? Speaking of bush, the burning bush. What an amazing moment for me in my life that was. Let me tell you about it. This is written in Exodus 3, 1 through 12. You can go and check it out. Um, so I had grown up in Pharaoh's palace, but I never lost sight of my Hebrew people. So when I became an adult, I saw one of the Egyptians taskmasters over my people, the Hebrews who had been enslaved. And he was beating mercilessly one of my Hebrew people. So I went over and I, I pushed him down and he got up and he started coming at me and one thing led to another and well, I killed him. I did. I did. Um, there's no way around it. I did. I killed him. And they, they were starting to find out about it and I knew I was going to be in trouble. So I fled. And um, Zipporah's dad, my father-in-law Jethro, had me working as uh, a shepherd. And so I'm near Mount Horeb, which we'll hear more about later. Uh, and I'm just doing my shepherd thing, trying to figure out where my life is going, what's going to happen next. And all of a sudden, I see something like this. There was a bush. It was big and it was on fire. Now, the cool thing was it was on fire, but not being consumed. So it was just blazing. And yet something miraculous was happening. And so again, this reminded me of that scene and took me back to that time that I want to enter you to walk with me through. So I saw it blazing and I thought, you know what, I need to stop what I'm doing. As I would write later in Exodus, I stopped to turn aside to see what miraculous thing was going on here with this bush that was burning, but wasn't really burning. So I stopped and I turned aside and I went. And that's where God called me, told me to remove my, my shoes. I was on holy ground. God reminded me this God that was speaking to me was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of Sarah, Rebecca, and Leah, and Rachel. And then as soon as I realized who it was, I said, here I am, Lord, here I am. And then God told me, that God had heard the calls of his people who had been enslaved in Egypt, 
and my job was to go and help them out. So two things I just want to you to think about in this part of my story today. Number one, when I saw the burning bush, I knew something miraculous was happened, but I could have looked at that and said, wow, that's kind of interesting. I got to get these sheep moving on. The pasture's fuller a mile or two down. I could have just left it, but I didn't. I turned aside to see that something miraculous and that it was from God, this action, this event that was happening. And I know, friends, from knowing God, that God communicates with you every day. You have burning bushes in your life on a daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly basis. And so often, not like me, you don't stop and turn aside. You look and you explain something away as not being from God, or you look and you think, well, that's not such a big deal. That could have happened this way or that way, instead of giving God the full credit. And so my first challenge is for you to stop and turn aside to see what might be God speaking to you directly. And secondly, my response, once I realized that God was, I was in God's presence and God was communicating with me, was to say, here I am. And so in this time, I know this virus environment, God is still calling to you. So look for your burning bushes this and every day. And when you find them, say to God, here I am. We didn't have big loud cars in my day, we had chariots. So when God speaks to you, stop, turn aside and respond, here I am, and see how God is calling you today. I know your pastor loves all of you. I know he misses all of you. And I know you can't wait to be together again in God's house. So God's blessings be on all of you. Shalom, friends.